Hey, Mr. Wad. Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, well, you guys just got done talking about the basics of waves, and I think we're going to start amping it up a little bit, increasing the amplitude there. Yeah, we've got to move uh, from Physics 1 into Geology so we can talk about this in terms of seismic waves. Nice. Like, well, More specific. Yeah, yeah, so today, by the end of the video, you should be able to explain the nature of seismic waves and their importance in determining the Earth's structure, okay, some uses of the waves. Okay. And explain the motion of the sp and speed of P, S, and surface waves. Yeah, we're going to focus a lot on P and S waves here in this segment mm -hmm. so that we have a really good grasp on how they behave differently in different Earth materials and how we can use them to really learn a lot about Earth's interior and about earthquakes. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then last thing, you should be able to describe the elastic rebound and the accumulation of strain in rocks. Okay, and that might come a little later in this segment. So uh, this is segment 2A, right? Yep, 2A, okay. and we're going to do 2B towards the end of it. Yeah, here we go. All right, let's take a look at these slides. So what are we seeing here? This looks like, this looks like a heart monitor or something like it, that. It does, right? So this is talking about how we actually collect seismic wave information. So okay. scientists, geoscientists, uh, geophysicists, use a machine called a seismograph and they collect the information basically on a piece of paper. Well, it used to be on a piece of paper with a pen, but now it's all collected digitally. So the idea, though, is that if you have a piece of paper and it's moving at a certain speed and you've got a pen staying still, right? Mm -hmm. If there's any shaking that the pen or the paper, depending on how the seismograph is set up, is going to move and you're going to get a record of that shaking and the shaking would be a train going by or a truck going by or a lot of people or an earthquake right yeah and i think if you even go by one of these seismograms or seismographs mm -hmm. seismograms seismograms and you go and jump by it you can make it shake you can oh that's yeah. so cool so we actually have one in the building we can't bring it up to the classroom here because there's too much vibration here from people walking in the hallways but if you go downstairs to the physics floor of the mm -hmm. science wing, you can actually go and see it's there. Oh, cool. All right. So let's go on to the next slide. So how can we find out about how waves travel through the Earth? How can we find out about how fast they travel, so the velocity of their propagation? The attenuation of wave energy. That's a fancy That's a word. One, yeah. mm -hmm. What does attenuation mean? Uh, like how it holds on to the energy? Is that kind of like how it's what we're talking about? Yeah. So we were talking about the pebble in the pond, and mm -hmm. we said that with distance from where that pebble is thrown in... The energy decreased, right? It's attenuation. Okay, yeah. so like the waves would be bigger, closer, and then smaller, further away. Exactly. Okay, cool. And that's the same thing that happens for an earthquake, because if we all remember back to the Japan earthquake about a year and a half ago now, we know that the earthquake was strongest, closest to where that rupture happened, and the further away you got the less it was felt. And because you could actually feel it, like, on the other side of the earth, like, on further and further away, but it probably wasn't as big, right? Very sensitive instruments could feel it, and okay. we couldn't, yeah. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about waves reflecting and actually refracting, too, but waves reflecting off of certain boundaries. And that was just bouncing off of boundaries or either bending through them, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so we're talking about the inside Earth. We're talking about elasticity. Now, I'm wearing some sweet pants right now that are elastic in the waist. Mm -hmm. Now, does that have to do with the Earth, too? Can you believe that rocks are as actually slightly elastic? Oh. So there are some geoscientists who spend their careers measuring how elastic, how stretchable rocks actually are. So you can take a solid rock and stretch it, and will it bounce back, too? It can if you don't stretch it too much. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this tells us that earth materials are mostly solid rock and they are elastic. And because they're elastic, the wave energy does travel through them. It does propagate through them as disturbances inside the earth. So just like that pebble in the pond, as the waves moved out, the waves would kind of move through the rocks too. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's cool. So the disturbance when we're talking about an earthquake though, is something like a fault. Okay. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Ah, we've got another little simulator here, and again, you're gonna have to jump out of this video. So you wanna pause the video. Jump into the slide deck, 
and then click down at the bottom of this slide where it says Earthquake Simulator. Now this one's a little bit tricky because up in the top left corner, you're going to see four different icons. You're going to see one for tornadoes. No. One for volcanoes. Not no. yet. I can't remember what the third one is, but I know the fourth one that looks like that little heart monitor, yeah. the little squiggly graph, that's the earthquake simulator. So that's where they want to go. Perfect. We're going to start shaking some stuff, right? Yeah, and they want to Good. click through that. So go ahead and jump out here and uh, come back and join us after you've played around with that earthquake simulator. Okay. And we're back. I hope you guys had a good time. I did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> So now I think we're going to focus in on the two main types of seismic waves. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to start out with this wave that's called the P wave. Okay. Now, there are some really good tricks to remember the difference between the P wave and the S wave. Okay. And one of them is to remember that everything about the P wave starts with the letter P. P. Okay. Okay, so like just... Because it's a primary wave. It's a primary wave. Such so the P, a P wave. Yeah. I've heard it also called a pressure wave. Okay. Like you're increasing pressure in one mm -hmm. direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's also the fastest. And Ooh. I spell fast, P-H-A-S-T. I just think of it because my first name's Patrick, and I'm really fast. So, I mean, that's an easy way for me to okay. remember it. So it's the <laughs> fastest. <laughs> so it's the primary wave. It's a pressure wave. It's the fastest wave, mm -hmm. and it travels by pushing and pulling. Okay, so it travels kind of like this almost. Exactly. It okay. travels by pushing and pulling. Okay. So if you look at the picture here on this slide, you can see that there are areas on this picture where it's marked compression right here and right here, and you can see that the boxes are compressed. Okay. And that's because the wave energy would be at that point, and it would actually be compressing the material that that wave is traveling through. So it's an elastic material, and it's being compressed as that wave energy comes to it, and then it's being stretched out as the energy passes by. Yeah, because if we compress something in one spot, we have to kind of pull it from another side. Mm -hmm. So we have to, they call it dilation, so mm -hmm. we have to kind of stretch it out in the other way. Yep. Okay. So push and pull, primary, fastest, and pressure, all That's to do awesome. with P waves. Perfect. And you notice that the energy is traveling in the same direction okay. as the push and pull. Okay. They're all parallel to each other. Both go in the same way. So if I started a wave towards you, yeah. then the energy would be moving between us two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in the same direction as travel. Yeah. Okay. Now that's going to be different with the next type of wave we're going to look oh, at. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the next type. So here we have the S wave. S wave. Now, P waves are primary, so S yeah. waves must be... Secondary. Nice. Okay. And everything with this one starts with the letter S. S. So you've got secondary. Now, I've heard of these called as shear waves. Shear. Okay. Side to side motion Ooh. and slower. Nice. Yeah, so we got secondary, S, shear, side to side, slower. Those all work out with being S waves. Perfect. Good. Yeah. So how do these travel? So if we look at the picture here, we can see that the wave is coming off and tie kind of to the right but look at the particle motion it's not being compressed anymore now it's going up and down or side to side so it's kind of like if we had the nice dance moves we could do like a wave like this mm -hmm. is that is this the move am i doing it right yeah we could do that yeah okay but the deal here is with the p wave the direction of propagation and the movement of the particles were parallel to each other same way in this one the direction of propagation is perpendicular or at 90 degrees at okay. right angles to the movement of the particles. Okay, so okay. if I was to send a wave your way, mm -hmm. the particles wouldn't be going parallel, but they'd, they'd be, be going, going up and down. Up and down in this one. Okay, okay, so if you start thinking about this kind of wave energy moving through the Earth, okay, and you're standing on the surface, you might start thinking that you're going to move in a different direction, yeah, okay. in response to that seismic energy traveling beneath you. Okay. All right, so let's move ahead again. So now it looks like we've got that comparison. So we're looking at the travel direction. So both of them are moving to the right. Mm -hmm. And just as a review, for the P wave, we've got particle motion moving the same way, so forward and backward. And then in the S wave, we've got particle motion, this time moving perpendicular, so up and down. Right. So you can remember that by remembering that the P always stands for things that start with P. And in P, its propagation is parallel to particles. Okay, good. 
Whew. That's a lot. That's yeah, a word. It That's is. A... <laughs> it is. Good review slide, though. Let's jump on here. So here's another simulation that you're going to want to jump out and, and take a look at. Again, you're going to pause our video. You're going to go to the bottom of the slide in the slide deck, mm -hmm. and you're going to click on this simulator. Mm -hmm. And this is going to let you play around a little bit with the P waves and the S waves and see really how they travel through this material that's created out of, in this case, some green balls. And it looks great where you can change the direction of travel. You can change P and S waves and uh, take some notes on which way the wave is moving and which way the particles may be moving. Sounds good. Okay, so go out and do that simulator. We'll wait here for you. And we're back. Good. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So we've got a really interesting graph here on this one. And with a question that comes with it, which type of waves move faster? Uh, you had an interesting way to remember which one moved faster, right? Yeah. The P wave, because it's P-H-A-S-T, gotcha. is faster. And the S wave, because it's an S, is slower. Perfect. But that travel velocity difference mm -hmm. is something that has been really, really useful to geologists and okay. to geophysicists. So here's kind of a graph that shows us a little bit about how we can use that time travel lag. Okay. So the graph has the travel time for the wave on the y-axis, and it has the distance the wave has traveled on the x-axis. So the so, closer to the center would be more towards the left, further uh -huh. away would be more towards the right. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a dist distance over time graph here. Okay. And here we're going to think about this always as being the actual time and location of the earthquake. So right when the earthquake happens in the exact center of That's it. That's where the energy leaves from. Okay. And we have two waves, in this case, that are leaving from that earthquake. We have the wave that is traveling along this distance time curve and the wave traveling along this distance time curve, okay. the upper one. And we know that the P waves travel faster, which means they go farther. They're going to go farther in, in less, less time. time. So if you look at the graph, the P wave, it makes a distance of D1 here, and it's actually much less time than if you looked at the S wave. Right. Okay. Okay. So what this graph allows geophysicists or geoscientists to do is it actually allows them to determine the location of earthquakes. Yeah, because I see they have three different distances here. Yeah. So if they look at three different distances of, you know, from an earthquake, they can use that to help figure out where the earthquake was. Exactly. We're going to be learning how to do that in class. Good. So that's a triangulation exercise that we'll be doing. But they do need three seismic stations in three. order to find that earthquake epicenter. Okay. Great. All right, ready to move on? Yeah. Good. So here we're actually talking about some of the properties of it. So we've got some speeds, and the P waves, remember, those were the faster with a pH, mm -hmm. and those move pretty quick, and they actually move in the, in the air too. So they move at 330 meters per second. That's pretty quick, mm -hmm. but it gets even quicker. It moves quicker through water, and it moves quicker through granite. Why do you think it moves quicker through a solid? So I'm thinking about those three different substances, yeah. air and water, and solid rock, okay, and so I'm thinking the main difference between those three things is going to be gaseous, gaseous, liquid, liquid and solid, solid yeah. and then it's also going to be a difference in the densities of the mm, materials. Okay. So we have the most dense material being the solid rock, and in the more dense material is mm -hmm. where those P waves actually move the fastest. And I think that's because they're, they're cramped, the particles are crammed really close together. They are. And so when you bump stuff and move stuff to the side, it's really easy to bump those particles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Now another thing that we need to notice here about the P waves we haven't talked about mm -hmm. is that P waves do travel through all three states of matter. Okay. Solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, so if I was in like a hot air balloon and a P wave was to come by, I could feel it. Well, <laughs> it would have to be an awfully loud scream for okay. you to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but the P waves do travel through solid, liquid, and gas. Okay. Not so for the S waves. So let's first of all look at uh, the velocity of the S waves. Okay. It's about 60% of the velocity of a P wave. Okay. So it's almost half again as slow. And one of the crazy things is it doesn't go through air, and it's not going through liquids. It only travels through S, solid. Okay. So there's another oh. S for the S waves. S waves only travel through solids. Mm. 
good distinction. That's awesome. That's yeah. that's solid. Glad to hear it. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next slide. And I think this is a good place for us to take a little break. You're going to want to go back, though. Uh, we're not going to have a formal mastery check here, but you're going to want to go back and make sure that you can write down a list of words that start with P that are associated with P waves, mm -hmm. including the PH yeah. one, and words that start with S that are associated with the S waves. That would yeah. be a good exercise to do right here, so we're sure that we have those down for our next segment. Awesome, because we're going to be talking a lot about these P and S waves. It's really important to know the difference between the two and what kinds of materials they travel through. Perfect. All right, thanks for joining us.